Yo, what is going on ladies and gentlemen, Horcrux here and welcome to the channel. So before we get into the bread and butter of today's video, a huge and glorious shout out to my patrons and also my community members. Thank you guys so much for supporting me and the channel. I really couldn't be doing this without you. Okay guys, so I know you've seen this title many, many times that ESO is dead, PvP is dead, you know, this, this game is trash. We need to move on to the next best thing. And I'm, while I'm not in 100% agreement with everyone, I do believe that ESO is going to be completely dead in 2022 and it's just going to be a cash grab game. And we're going to go over some of those reasons. Um, so we're going to talk about PvE for a little while. So PvE, while it does have its bugs, um, I am a player who generally does not enjoy PvE content, but every time I play PvE in ESO, I actually do have a really good time. You know, I've been doing some raids here as of late. And it's actually pretty fun. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, and this is a lot for me coming from a super competitive PvP background, right? So the PvE aspect is not what's killing the game. It's not the microtransactions. Well, I mean, kind of is a little bit. Maybe just the microtransactions are the only thing keeping ESO afloat at this time. But the focus of this video is gonna be mostly about PvP, and we're not going to be negative. We're gonna be really constructive about how to actually fix PvP in ESO. I've had a lot of time to sit and think about this and one of the main key points I want to bring up is the hardware issues. Okay, there's nothing we can do about the hardware issues. All right, Rich Lambert has already went on to say that if it was a hardware issue that they would fix this a long, long time ago. Now, the problem arises and why people get so salty is let's, let's just focus on cereal for one moment for the sake of the argument. And then we're going to go off into what needs to be done aside from Cyrodiil. So as a dynamic game, the combat in ESO is bar none, one of the most unique I've ever seen in any MMO. The combat system feels amazingly great. So kudos to Bethesda, Zenimax, you know, whoever for coming up with this and having no cooldowns on spells and yada yada. And it's really hard to balance, balance a game. And quite frankly, ESO is amazing when it works. Like, it honest to God is. I'm not just saying that because I'm a big ESO fanboy, right? But the problem arises is when the the focus of the dev team is it's focused on the wrong aspects of ESO. So right now, it is all about fixing Cyrodiil, fixing the lag, and we are going to receive zero help with anything else until the lag is fixed in Cyrodiil. That approach is completely wrong. Um, Cyrodiil, I hate to say it guys, we need to evolve past Cyrodiil. The game's been out seven years, I know this has been the driving focus of this game, you know, is the open world, destructive environment, lore, you know, it. we get it. But the time has come to just, I'm not saying get rid of Cyrodiil, okay? I'm saying that we need other alternatives, incentives besides Cyrodiil. Now, the problem arises when, alright, so I already have 100 ping. Okay, 100, 110 at any time. And I have like God tier internet, right? So that's number one issue. Uh, number two issue is when it's not even the population density of the players in Cyrodiil. For example, what, well, what I mean by that is if there's 200 people I keep, yeah, it's probably going to lag. But that is not the underlying issue. Five, six, seven years ago, that wasn't the problem. Okay. I know there's a lot more in the game now. The, the system that... Um, ESO is built off of. I mean, this is no Unreal Engine 5, right? You know, it's it's very outdated. It needs upgraded, and, and that's something you know, that would take over time. And I don't think that is going to be the proper approach as well. So, Cyrodiil, when you start getting population locked across all three alliances, that's when you start running into issues. It does not matter where you're at in Cyrodiil, you're going to lag. You're going to have a half a second latency one second latency sometimes two to three seconds latencies on each and every single ability you cast and it gets super frustrating for the players and you know it's it's just a terrible terrible experience so the fix to this is to okay well let's cut the maximum population of cereal you know what's left up by an additional 20 percent you know kind of limit how many people can be in there okay well that may fix your performance but to be quite frank, Cyrodiil is just way too big for the population size. There's not enough to do. It's just too spread out, too sparse. There's no incentive. There's no focal points. And you cannot get action by doing that. So what you're left with is just a laggy mess and there's no one around you to do anything, right? 
Again, let me reiterate what Rich Lambert said. He said that we are not going to do anything PvP related until Serial is fixed. Quite frankly, Serial is not worth fixing at this point, in my opinion, guys. Um, let me know if you guys agree with me down in the comments, but that's going to lead me to my next points. So if we can't fix Serial, and it's going to take years and years or however long to fix Serial, which, I mean, quite frankly, everyone's a burnout on it. I mean, let's be honest. What can we do? So to my point earlier, how ESO needs to evolve. So there's plenty that we, we can do. So let's go ahead and do like a, a PVP breakdown of what's happened like in the past five years. So in 2015, uh, we got the, uh, the Imperial City. Uh, we got the Golden Vendors 2016. I think we got Battlegrounds in 2017. Uh, we got new Battlegrounds maps uh, a couple years later in 2019. And uh, also in 2019, we got the uh, the Hammerfell dude. What's his name? Uh, the well, whatever the hammer is, the Volendrung, there we go. And then we have Destructible Bridge in Cyrodiil, which actually caused Cyrodiil to lag even more. Why that's not been reverted is um, unbeknownst to me. We got some r really cool knockoff uh, Dwemer Seize engines in 2020. And then uh, just some playlist updates in 2021. Um, that's all the PvP changes that we have had in the past five years. That's it. So it's about time to work on what works and then just don't worry about what doesn't work. So right now, Imperial City Sewers is an absolute gem. I've never had a bad experience down in the sewers. Okay. So the sewers are like one of the most fun places, the most lag free places to be in ESO. It's small enough to where you're always running into action. There's incentive with Telvar stone sets, you know, yada, yada. And every time the Mid-Year Mayhem or some of the PvP events come around incentivizing sewers, I have an absolute blast, as does everyone. So, one of my proposals is to, again, you don't necessarily have to close Cyrodiil, right? But, I do want to see a focus on sewers, whether this would be, be like incentives like titles, weapon skins, uh, even more Telvar, different weapon sets, something that's really, really grindy that you have to grind your ass off for, right? And not just pop in for a couple days and, you know, bada bing, bada boom. So something needs to draw you into the sewers. And amounts would be a good idea, right? Again, like skins, titles, people will love that stuff. This is an MMO. There's a lot of completionists out there that just like to have these tiles and flaunt and show them off. So... Again, Imperial City Sewers put so much more emphasis on that. I think everyone will have such a great PvP experience and it will help ease the transition away from Cyrodiil because quite frankly, I don't want to go into Cyrodiil until it's fixed. I don't know how you guys feel. I would be perfectly fine with Cyrodiil servers completely shutting down for six months, whatever. Pushing everyone to do either Battlegrounds or Imperial City Sewer content and then just optimizing the sewers and also the BG content. So let's talk about the BG content as well. Um, people grab about not having new maps. I, I don't think having new maps is going to drive people to Battlegrounds. Again, the point of Battlegrounds is that you can have an instant fight, you know, jump into the action, test builds. You know, it's very small scale. It's really fun all the time, every time, single time I play BGs. Yeah, it's stacked differently sometimes sometimes you get two healers on a team and you just want to beat your head against a freaking wall but overall it's a really good experience so you need to incentivize it more you know more alliance points more sets titles again guys sets titles skins the weapon skins mounts would go such a long way and it would keep people invested in battlegrounds for much much longer than just adding like a, a crappy map or whatever so my next point i want to point out is something that rich lambert has kind of laughed at but um how pvp housing i don't think this is a bad idea so the question is like okay how do we monetize all this like how how is zoss going to make money from pvp uh, which is why it doesn't get any focus because there is no incentive for them to focus on pvp well have a house that you can buy a completely customized terrain you know just a blank slate have it cost 30, 40, you know, bucks, whatever 4,000 crowns is, and have people able to invite other players to their house with the environment that they've customly made for PvP fighting teams, capture the flag, you know, whatever. Give us a customizable game mode or something in our housing to drive up you know, PvP, right? And you can go, you can list this somewhere, kind of like a lobby, you can join. 
You can join other people's houses, host your own tournaments, you know, flag everyone for free for all. You know, instead of just duels between two people, everyone who goes into this house has, you know, their flag for PvP. You know, it's like a free for all, you know. And there, there's, there's just so much you can do with it. I don't see why it's out of the realms of possibilities to do something like that. I don't think that would ruin the game whatsoever. I just think that would give us players a variety. It gives us the ability to build what we want instead of relying on devs to build what we want, which is quite frankly not going to happen anytime soon in the foreseeable future. So give us a little bit of that power to make our own games and make you know housing fun. I mean, housing is the true in game. I mean, let's be real, fellas, right? There's a lot you can do with the housing with uh that, that the housing competitions and other little games people are hosting here and there like Blinko and yeah that stuff to me is really fun and that's what you know ESO kind of lacks when you compare this to Final Fantasy man like the the in-game housing where you make nightclubs and people just come and have a good time like that is really really awesome so I, I really wish ESO could do something similar to Final Fantasy so please take some notes guys and another thing I want to point out uh we'll kind of go back to the BG subject for example um give, give us a customizable bg playlist you know just give us more options in bgs i mean all this is under the presumption that we are going to just not worry about serial if you can drive the players from serial into imperial city sewers and battlegrounds you can get away with a lot more right so i think that is the approach that the dev team needs to focus on if they are going to truly keep the pvp player base around which, I mean, I know that's not a lot, guys, but let's be real. PvP is a huge part of MMO. I mean, if the PvP players are going to be... The PvP players, in my opinion, are some of the most diehard fans of the game. So, if their objective is to push out the diehard fans and then just do a cash grab on all the new players, I mean, you know, to each their own. Uh, is it immoral? Yeah. Is it crappy? Yeah. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, is it the dead team's fault? Probably not. It's just corporate greed up the structured ladder and you know yada yada you know they can't say anything about it they just gotta do their job i understand but so i really hope that's not the focus right but in closing the kind of tldr is what i want to present to you guys is that i feel that serial has run its course the game needs to evolve past serial there needs to be a lot more incentive thereof for imperial city sewers to drive the players there because the servers always work and always feels great or into BGs, which you also need a little bit more incentive. Some of the incentives that I would love to see in the game are again, skins, titles, weapon skins, mounts, just give you something to show off for your time invested into ESO, which is why you play an MMO to begin with, right? Is you get a investment for the time that you put into the game and you get to show off. And right now there's just not much to show off, you know, not much to be proud of, which is a really sad to say, but no, it is what it is guys. So this has been my thoughts on ESO going into 2022. I really hope um, this was constructive. I know some people have done way more constructive videos than I have. This is just me giving my two cents from a seven year old PVP vet. And I am pretty hopeful Gina Bruno reaching out to the community asking what they would like to see in communication. And quite frankly, um, it just might be a day late and dollar short. Um, the intentions are there, I'm sure. But uh, we'll just see how it plays out. Um, Thank you guys for tuning in and watching today's video let me know what you guys think down in the comments please like and eviscerate that subscribe button and i will catch you guys in the next one peace